All right, so we're going to make a quick little video on uh, graphing exponential growth and decay functions. I'm going to graph an exponential growth function 2 times 2 to the x plus 3 minus 1. And that's going to be our function that we're graphing. This is exponential growth, but we're going to follow the same process if we were doing exponential decay. So remember what I told you guys in class was to ignore the plus 3 and the minus 1 part because when you ignore the plus 3 and the minus 1, this right here and this right here are going to move our parent function and we're going to focus in on making a table of values only for the 2 times 2 to the x power so we're going to ignore the plus 3 the minus 1 and we're just going to focus in on this making ourselves a table of values with our easy values that we've used before negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 when we plug in negative 2 into this function you're going to end up getting 1 half remember you can use a calculator to do this I'm doing this in my head just to save a little bit of time here. Negative 1, when you plug it in here, you're going to end up with positive 1. We did talk about when you plug in 0 for x here, you're always going to get this beginning amount. Remember, like our bank accounts and things that we talked about, our principal value that we plug in. That's going to be the value that you always get for 0 there because that's going to be our y-intercept of our original graph. But then we're going to move it with the plus 3 and the minus 1. When I plug in 1 here, I'm going to end up with 4. And when I plug in 2, I'm going to end up with 8. So these values right here are our parent function. These are the ones that we are going to go through and graph first. And I'm going to graph these lightly over here on the side. I do apologize. I don't have uh, any graph paper. I forgot to bring some home with me. Imagine that, a math teacher who doesn't carry around graph paper with him all the time. It's kind of crazy, huh? I know you guys carried yours home over the, the break, so I should have carried mine home, right? So, anyway, you've got negative 2 and 1 half is going to be here. And I'm just going to put a light little dot. Negative 1, 1 is going to be here. And put a light little dot. 0, 2 is going to be the y-intercept right there. Put a light little dot. 1, 4 is going to be here. And then 2, 8 is going to be up here. Notice it has that ramp shape that we talked about. And again, I'm sorry we don't have graph paper. And I'm putting light little dots because, remember... What we talked about is that these graphs have this little ramp shape, but they have what's called an asymptote that moves across this line. This line will flatten out and it'll run really, really close to that, and it gets closer and closer to zero, but it never touches it. And that's going to be important because when we take plus 3 and minus 1 and move these dots, that asymptote is also going to move. So the plus 3 and the minus 1, remember what we talked about. Remember we talked about how this guy right here, you take the opposite this guy right here, you take the same. So the opposite of 3 is going to be negative 3. So this graph is going to move left 3 spaces. And then the same as negative 1 is negative 1. So it's going to move down 1 space. So you're going to take it and you're going to take every single one of these points and move them left 3 and down 1. Again, I'm sorry that I don't have the graph paper, uh, but uh, we'll be all right. So if we take this and we move it left 1, 2, 3, and down 1 space, it's going to be down negative 1 half there. Take this one, move it 1, 2, 3, and then down 1 space, it's going to be at 0. Take this one, move it 1, 2, 3, it's going to be at 1. Take this one here, move it left 3, 1, 2, 3, and then down 1. And it's going to be at 3 there. And then this one, move it left 3, 2, 3, and then down 1, it'll be at 7 there. And so you end up with this graph that goes up through here, makes that ramp shape that, like we talked about. And then, right here, and I'm going to turn my paper sideways to help me out a little bit. Remember there is what we call an asymptote. And that asymptote has also moved down one space. So it used to be on the x-axis, but now it's at negative one because this whole graph moved down one space. So we take this. And when we flatten this guy out, basically our little ramp just runs right up along that asymptote. And that's kind of the definition of an asymptote. I know I'm kind of simplifying things a little bit, but that is sort of the definition of an asymptote is the line that the graph approaches closer to. Uh, and we'll get into asymptotes a little bit more in the next chapter, a little bit more detail. But that's how you graph an exponential growth or decay function. Decay function would just look different and be going down like this. Um, remember if that 2 in the front was negative, it would take this whole thing and flip it, but it would still be a growth function. It would just be growing in the negative direction like our national debt. So, 
There you go.